Hi, I'm Don. This is the church of making your day. Coming in right now is my beautiful wife, Natasha Alexander. And what we're going to do today is we're going to combine Genesis 10 with Genesis 11 because about 50% of both chapters about are um, genealogy. And I don't know about you, stuff's kind of dry to me, right? I don't know who they're talking about. I don't know anything about them. So if you guys want to do a study on it, more thorough, more power to you. So we're going to uh, pick and choose verses that particularly speak about a particular person in that genealogy that make a big difference at the end, right? We know that the whole idea of God creating genealogy of Adam and Eve uh, get from an umbilical cord to umbilical cord uh, get us Jesus. So Jesus is going to be born through this lineage. And we're going to look in the chapters in particular uh, uh, people that were born in this genealogy, in this line, uh, lineage, um, to, to, uh, to be meaningful on some way throughout the whole process, let's say. Right, right. the right. process. The, history, the process of bringing Jesus uh, to us. And right. so we start with um, Genesis 10. All right, Genesis 10, 1. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And unto them were sons born after the flood. The sons of Japheth, Gomer and Magog. That's what we're not gonna do. <laughs> That's what? That's what we're not gonna do. Well, all oh, this, um, Number two? Let's see, there's a list here. Yep. Okay, the list. I guess I've, I forgot to read the list. <laughs> okay. Okay, what's so, on the list? Um, <laughs> so, so to remind you one more time, so this very first verse um, reminds us, so everything gets started, if you remember, from Adam and Eve, right? And then uh, suddenly, when this lineage got polluted by follow, um, uh, fallen age, uh, angels, uh, that God created flood, and the only person, the only family, actually God would want to dis destroy everything and everybody. But then uh, he noticed that only one family that worthwhile to work with, to bring Jesus to earth, is family of Noah. And then the Noah created, uh, if you remember, an ark, and took him, the whole process took him almost a hundred years to build, because the size of the, of the ark was half of the size of, we talk about Princess Crew's um, um, shape, right? That's how huge it is. So, and uh, three sons of Noah, we talk about it, is Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So we're going to, uh, we're going to take a close look on um, two of them actually, Shem and Ham, how these two play a big role through the entire uh, family lineage of Noah. So, and so we're going to skip the, the verses that talks about their sons, their grandsons, and we're going to go right now to verse 5. And the reason for that, because we've been talking about no and been talking about no, of course, it's the most important thing because that lineage will bring Christ. However, we almost forgot about Gentiles. So what happened was people... Um, and all these races that were created on day six. If you remember, Jesus, uh, God created men and women and, and tell them, be fruitful and multiply, right? And so now we have a little clarification here, just one word to tell us what's going, going on with Gentiles. Right. Okay, so um, 10.5, Genesis 10.5. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families, in their nations. So, so the black people in Africa, right? Mm -hmm. Divided by their tongues, their nations, there's different nations right. in Africa. China, divided by their tongues, right? And on and on with all the different ethnos, so with all the remember, different ethnic groups. If you remember, we talk about 223 nationalities. Not just the races, so we have four major races, but we talk about the 223 nationalities 
throughout the earth. So each of them, they had their tongue, they have their culture, their families, the nations. So that's one little verse just to remind you that at the same time, as we focus on Noah the most of the time, of the entire Bible actually, the Gentiles are still there, they didn't go anywhere, they have, they said they're going through their process on their own way, but they also have the, the, the language, the culture, the everything going in uh, in this and their paste so they did not disappear to the flood flood so right. that's basically what this verse would want to remind you that they're still there and uh from this point we're going to go through verses verse six okay six through ten mm -hmm. right. no six eight nine ten oh yeah skip so yeah we're gonna skip some because those verses just going to uh, mention name of sons and grandsons um, and then we're going to stop on particular name that mean a lot in the history, right? So we're going to take that name and focus on it. And then we're going to skip several verses and we will continue the same way. So right now it's six. Number six. And the sons of Ham, Cush and Mizraim and Pot and Canaan. Kind of funny that Canaan is mentioned last. Because you'd automatically assume that well, the son with his mother, right, was his first son. Well, it's interesting. Maybe because, not. Because apparently in Bible, somehow, they may mention the younger son first. And, and the elder go, later. Yeah, because... Kind of what they're doing here, probably. Uh, yeah, because if you go into the previous chapter, um, let's say chapter Shem, five, Ham, and Japheth, mm -hmm, right. When they did mention Shem, Ham, and Japheth, uh, Shem actually the youngers. And Ham is the middle one, and Jeff is the oldest. And right. so this is basically. So they of, weren't they weren't mentioned according to their mm -hmm. ages. Right. Firstborn. And eight. Okay, verse eight. Mm -hmm. And Cush begat Nimrod. He began to be a mighty one in the earth. Mighty for what? Mighty for evil. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. Wherefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before the Lord, and the beginning of his kingdom was Babel, confusion, Babylon, all about him, not God, and Eric, and Akkad, and Kalnath, in the land of Shinar. Okay. Okay, and, from there, yeah. go to 20. Okay. Yeah, and we're just going to uh, here for a second, just to remind you that, okay, so here's the situation we're facing. And so we had God uh, that created Adam and Eve, mm -hmm. and Adam and Eve, they had two sons, right? We had two sons, Cain and Abel. Right, first okay. two sons. First two sons. And if you remember, Cain uh, murdered Abel, and from that point, he married on Gentile, and he went on his way, and his genealogy is completely separate from genealogy of Noah. Right. So from Adam. From this. Or, from no, that, no. Yeah. yeah. From that point, we completely forgot about um, Cain, and now we're going to focus only on this, on the son Seth, right? Adam and Eve had some Seth, and from that point. There's a part of generation of Adam, and we study about this in chapter 5. And then here's the Noah. And there was a story about Noah and the fall of agent and the ark, right? And we get back here right now where we talk about already sons of Noah after the flood. And one of the sons, Ham, had a certain sons, right? So, however, Kai, Kirsch, Kirsch probably, right? Kirsch. Uh, had a son Nimrod, so we want to to say significance. So if you remember, it was a very unpleasant situation with him in the previous chapter, where he um, happened to have intimate uh, relationship with uh, his mother, and uh, as a result of that, uh, Canaan was born, son of him, which is mentioned here, the very last one, as we just uh, talk about this, right? Right. So now, the interesting thing that, um, so to leave this alone and continue with Karsh, Kantil was Nimrod. So we understood that Nimrod apparently was a significant, because, significant person because um, he began uh, the kingdom and the kingdom of Babylon, 
the one that we talk in a revolution. So if you um, if you've been with us in, from the very beginning, you know that right after Matthew we, we jump to uh, revol uh, revolution, and then from there we went to Genesis. So if you've been with us in Revelation, or if you want to visit the videos that we film, so you will hear a lot about uh, the Babylon and how that's going to play out at the end of their uh, second earth age and beginning of the third earth age. So that's a very interesting moment. So literally, this is that Babylon that we've been talking about in Revelation to the very end. The first Babylon. I think it's very, very significant. So you can see where it all started. And surprisingly, it started by son of Ham, the one that uh, happened to have relationship with uh, with his mother um, and and you know of course you know at that time it's very interesting because when we went to uh, Leviticus and we uh, read Leviticus it's already Moses right there's a there's a close of that time mm -hmm. right so when we read uh, Leviticus and we read um, that um, a nakedness of this and nakedness of that belong to, to where and to whom. So we actually uh, witnesses the creation of the God's law versus... Yeah, that's God. where some of the first laws of God came out right. before the Ten Commandments. Right, as a, as a God a guidance. Um, and being honest with you, like if you, if you think about God, right, God is love, God is joy, God, God is kindness, God is this amazing energy. And I honestly think they never probably would cross his mind that um, just because Ham had relationship with his mother would affect Noah that much. And mm -hmm. it did. He cursed yeah. him. Yeah, mm -hmm. it did. However, you see, um, God is not us. He also um, learning about his creation. Right. He is learning our creation and our understanding and our uh, sensitivity versus of what is going on around us. Yeah, he's never dealt with anyone in the flesh. Exactly not. Yeah. And, and basically when he gave us this free will for us basically to do the way we think things needs to be done, he's learning together with us. Now, keep in mind, the most significant for God is... To keep this pure energy, pure lineage for the Christ to be born. Now, if he will allow negativity to be present in this lineage, then that negativity will affect the soul of, at the end of the story, Mary, or whoever Jesus is supposed to be born with. Like, you know, it could be not Mary, it could be anybody else, mm -hmm. right? Happened to be Mary. Uh, but the point is, then in Leviticus, God said, okay, uh, I got the I got the point that right. bothers you. That just like make you upset. I mean, he cursed his grandson basically. Right, right, kind of grandson. Out. I don't know how. Out. Can, yeah, but the point is when God starts learning our sensitivity and our feelings and our negative reaction towards what we like, what we dislike, then He start creating those laws to uh, basically exclude those negativities from our life. Right to keep this pure good energy uh, that surround us and at the end of the story will keep this beautiful soul um, ready for Jesus to come. Because God himself, Jesus himself has its incredible energy that must be aligned with Mary or whoever going to be mother of Christ. And God did everything possible to keep this energy in us, to keep this energy in lineage of Christ. So just keep that in mind. It's a very, very interesting concept because with understanding of quantum physics, with understanding of an energy, with understanding of uh, psychology of humans right now at the level that we can, we can really see uh, the God, uh, what God was doing through the entire Bible. Right. How he was uh, basically um, by... Uh, errors and by uh, setting it up yeah and he was sitting up the stage for Christ to come and it wasn't easy for him why because he never could predict what what we're gonna do right God doesn't know everything right a lot of people think he knows everything it, he doesn't know what you're gonna do tomorrow no he kind of knows he, <laughs> right well the, but the, he doesn't know every word you're gonna say the, every thought you're gonna think how boring 
Right. The point is, when he gave us free will, when he gave, uh, he gave Lucifer free will, he had no idea that Lucifer going to turn around against of him. Right. He had no idea that one third of the soul... He knew it was possible, but he was hoping that he, it wouldn't happen. He, he had no idea that one third of the uh, uh, angels going to be against yeah, him. Yeah, we're going to go with Lucifer. The whole, the whole point is that when, the, when God created in his creation, when he gave free will, he really cannot um, control you on the way. No. Nope. You're not a robot. You have a free will to do what you want to do. And you, you go either uh, toward God or you, either you go toward Satan. You have your free will, free ways. And that's basically where the whole interesting uh, play going on. So we're going to, uh, right. we're going to observe here. Yeah. See, God doesn't know if you're going to make it. God doesn't know if I'm going to make it. God doesn't know if she's going to make it, right? He's hoping and praying. He wills that none should perish, that all should have eternal life. But we all know that's not going to happen. There will be those who perish. The Bible says so. So we, it's up to us, right? Free will. But, but the point is, he does not know, but because he know what affect our soul on a negative way, he gave us instructions to understand how to live our life, how to behave, how to care about our body, how to care about our soul, right. how to care about our family. He literally gave us book to understand as instructions through life, how to earn tickets, if you will, right. to the eternal life. That's right. How to Your earn e that, ticket yeah. <laughs> off to eternal life. How to life. earn that white, beautiful garland that you can in, to be in alignment with God at the end. And it's really all up to you. However, all these instructions, remember we talked about book The Secret? This is the secret. This is the secret that has been uh, from the beginning right. with everybody. And that's why Jesus said, have you read? You know, Because if you read that you know. And if you know and you're not doing it, then it's your fault, right? So you have to do according to Bible and then you're going to earn your white beautiful garland at the end and your internal life, which is in alignment with that. Right. And okay. some, some of those laws, uh, basic, the basic laws, mm -hmm. the uh, nakedness of your mother, the nakedness of your father, and on and on. Okay, what did that have to do with? Uh, incest. No more incest. These are laws in Leviticus against incest. What else did he talk about? Bestiality. No bestiality, no animals, right? And a man doesn't lay with a man. And a woman doesn't lay with a woman. Homosexuality. These are the first basic laws. Mm -hmm. Kind of funny, it all has to do with sex, right? You know, it's kind of like, um, that was obviously a well, big problem. Well, he first of all, he needs to keep this lineage pure, mm -hmm. right? Which is right. from umbilical to, court to umbilical court. You don't, you don't. Or you want, you don't want, right? And that's the first part. And second part, it creates... Um, very interesting um, in humans, right? It creates very interesting emotions mm -hmm. when it's involved. And um, it's not just family. It's not just like, well, you cannot be with your sister. Because originally, Adam and Eve and Seth, so apparently Seth's wife was his younger sister, Azar. Probably. Which is four years younger than him, right? right. At the beginning, there were sisters and brothers. Right. There was nobody else around. Right. This it. This was it. So so why is it suddenly in Leviticus we learn that God decided to change that? Right. And now you said, okay, it's not just your sisters and your brothers, but also if there's if they're your daughter in law right. or in -laws. your sister in laws. I mean, wait a minute, we don't have any blood connection with them. Why is that? Because if you think about it, it creates a negative emotion in the family. Right. right, it does automatic. Automatic, you want or you don't, and because of this negativity that God trying to stay away, uh, God said, "Don't do that," because it will not affect your family in a good way. Right, and it's kind of like Cain and having um, sex with his mother. Okay, there was no law against it, mm -hmm. so I guess it was okay, right? Mm -hmm. No, it wasn't okay. It wasn't okay at all. It wasn't okay. Don't believe me? Ask Noah. It, it, it wasn't, wasn't okay. It wasn't okay for Noah. It creates a big problem. I mean, to the point that Noah had to curse that son. Yeah, right? and get him out of there. He had to leave. Goodbye. 
There goes Ham's son. Goodbye. Yeah. Forever. Get out. Don't come back. You're yeah. cursed. And that's exactly what God was trying to avoid because the end of the story, that was the most important for him. Right. Okay. And then verse 20. Okay, verse 20. These are the sons of Ham. Remember Ham, the father of Canaan? After their families, after their tongues, and their countries, and in their nations. Okay. So just one more, one more saying that. So um, with three sons of Noah, we spoke about Ham, right? The most important, I mean, yeah, I'm not saying the, the most important, but I'm just saying we give him most of attention. Right. Because of what him, he did. We gave him attention in the previous chapter, and we gave him attention now because apparently his grandson became, um, his, the kingdom of the grandson became, became Babylon. Right. right. So now we finish with Ham and we're moving forward to um, Shem. To Shem, which is the youngest son. Okay. So 21 and then verse, just 21 and 31? Yes. Yeah, because that's all the names, all the begots. Mm -hmm. Unto Shem also, the father of all the children of Ebar, the brother of Japheth, the elder, even to him, were children born. And on and on, they name them here. Okay, so then you have a list of kids and grandkids until we're going to get to the person that is important to us. Um, we're probably not going to um, talk about anybody else here. So we're going to just finalize this verse 31. Mm -hmm. These are the sons. So this is the end of the genealogy for um, Shem. Mm -hmm. 31. These are the sons of Shem after their families, after their tongues, in their lands, and after their nations. And 32. These are the families of the sons of Noah, after their generations, in their nations, and by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. Okay. And let's finalize our chapter 10. Uh, since chapter 10 uh, was so short, we'll continue chapter 11. It'll kind of make sense because we kind of nice flow from one chapter. Yeah, we're not going to do all of chapter 11 either. Okay, chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech at this time. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime that they, that they had for mortar. What is slime? It's like concrete, it's like mortar. Something hard, waterproof. Or clay. Clay. That connect those bricks together, yeah. Right. And they said, go to, let, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. What are they paranoid of? Another flood, of course. What do you do to get out of a flood? Get above it. Build a tower, right? 100% anti-God thinking, right? 100%. Babylon, the city of Babel, nothing yeah. to do with God. Yes, yeah, so basically they start creating something that um, give God red flag, right? It's interesting because after, if you remember, um, after God void the whole earth and right. start all over again, right? After God had no flood, was after all this fallen angel. So now God is keeping close attention what is going on with these people and right. <laughs> what they're up to. Right. right. Because remember, his plan is very different. <laughs> hey, he's not asking questions anymore. <laughs> yeah. Noah, where art thou? Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, Adam, where art thou? No, he knows where everyone is. Right. He's so, got it all down. So now he's playing a very close attention. Why? Because his idea to save the third soul of billions of souls that he created and uh, who left was, was uh, Satan, right? So he wants to bring the souls back through, through bringing back Jesus Christ. So 
until he's going to get to Jesus, he needs to know that these people are on track. Right. And What's going suddenly on? when he looked and they built in this tower <laughs> and they named themselves and they they literally uh, up to some up to no good in other words, right. right? There's something right. else coming up. Remember, this is one of the purest family that existed. And yet in that family we have this beginning of Here something. we go again into Here the we sin. Go again. Right? Okay. Can't stay out of that sin. Oh. And, and, and the those, Lord mm-hmm. five. Mm-hmm. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Kind of like coming down to Sodom and Gomorrah, right? God doesn't come down too often to see what's going on. He came down now. Mm-hmm. And the Lord came down. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them. They're all on the same page. They're all unified to do what? Build a tower against God, which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth. And they left off to build the city. So they left building what? Babylon. Who tried to rebuild it about 30, 40 years ago? Saddam Hussein, the new Nimrod, the new, um, what was his name? Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Where'd they find him? In a hole, right? He started on the, about, when God says don't rebuild something or, you know, Sodom and Gomorrah, don't do it. Don't do it. And nine. Okay, so, um, which nine? Mm-hmm. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language. They were babbling to each other now. They couldn't understand the language, the languages. Um, the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. Um, we're going to read 10? Mm-hmm. Okay. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was 100 years old and begot Erfaxen. Er- Two years after the flood. Okay. And then from this point, from verse 11 to all the way to verse um, 25, Mm -hmm. you will see just a list of uh, children and grandchildren that were born. Uh, However, one of them we're going to mention. um, His name is super important, and that's verse 25. 25. And Nahor lived after he begot Terah, 119 years, and begot sons and daughters. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram. Who's Abram? Abram is Abraham. Started off with Abram. Sarah started off with Sarah, but God changed their names. Just like he changed um, uh, Jacob to Israel. Just like he changed uh, Saul of Tarsus to Paul the Apostle. New beginning Mm -hmm. in life. Begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terah. Terah begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. And Haran begat Lot. So who was Lot? Abraham's nephew. Mm -hmm. And Abraham and Lot hung together until they were so blessed they couldn't hang together anymore. And they had to separate their lands and Lot went off to Sodom and Gomorrah because that was the most beautiful place. And Haran died before his father Terran in the land of his nativity in Ur of the Chaldees. And Abram and Nahor took them wives. The name of Abraham's wife, Seri. And the name of Nahor's wife, Milcah. 
the daughter of Hiram, the father of Milcah, and the father of Ishka. But Sari was barren. She had no child. And Terah took Abram, his son, and Lot, the son of Haram, his son's, his son's son, and Sari, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Terah were 205 years, and Terah died in Haran. Now something just kind of interesting that hit me, I heard this about a million years ago. The first 12 chapters of Genesis are all about what? The world, right? Mm -hmm. All the people in the world, the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. What happened with the Gentiles? What happened with Israel? The, the children of Noah before Israel, right? The next 12 chapters are all about what? One man. The next 12 chapters. 12 chapters up till now was the whole world, the creation of the world. It, um, consisted of thousands of years, right? The next 12 chapters we'll see, Abraham. Who was Abraham? The father of all Israel, of all these nations. So we finally see the stability, right? Versus this is beginning and little chaos and uh, Satan and God uh, you know, kind of bouncing back and forth. And so finally, in the next chapter, we, we're going to see that stability where um, we're going to learn some more about uh, our father of fathers. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Abraham. Uh, and originally from Abram and Sarah, um, they've been turned to Abraham and Sarah, right? And we're going to talk about this beautiful story of theirs. Um, so for us to, uh, to just to recall and just to remember, so we just finish up a beautiful uh, two chapters that told us two things, right? So we have Ham, who was one of the sons of Noah, and his city of the Babylon through his grandchild uh, Nimrod. And the next one is Shem, the youngest son of Noah, and through him we got um, we got uh, Abram or Abraham, and we're going to start to work on this next little chapter. Next That's time. who Christ comes through, Abraham, Father Abraham. And we thank you so much for being with us. Um, please uh, take a look and read those names, and just um, just to clarify to yourself so the importance of every person and lineage. And um, I think it's so wonderful that we know every single name because. God was very, very particular, right, at that time to keep everything so uh, organized and so um, certain. So perfect. And, and see, the thing is, is we didn't know them. We really don't know anything about them. If yeah. you want to do a word study, go into your uh, Smith's Bible Dictionary, go into your concordance as much as you can, and um, the appendixes in the Companion Bible, and you can get to know them a little better. God knew them perfectly. God knew them throughout their whole four, five, six, seven, eight, nine hundred year span. That's how awesome God is. So to God, it wasn't like, now who's this guy? God saw him live for a lot of them for hundreds of years. Saw him have children. Saw them do what they were going to do, right? Which is just so heavy, right? To us means almost nothing. Not to God. Yeah, he that, created them. That, he watched them. That's very interesting because um, as he understood, as God understood, because I think at the beginning he just was uh, hoping that everything was going to be just fine as it is. Right. But when he observed... The eternal hope. When he observed and when <laughs> he saw, then it's not just fine. And um, as humans, we are very weak, right? And we are very tempted. And when he realized that, that at that point, he said, well, I need to instruct them, I need to guide them so we can get that uh, salvation and we 
we can have a um, um, presence of Jesus Christ in our life. Amen. And thank you so much again. We'll see you shortly. Jesus Christ, to take us through the mess of life, right? To get us through. And he's the man. All right. See you for uh, number 12 next time.